The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Diagnostic Trading Hour with your host, Daryl Martin. Now, Daryl Martin. All right, folks, welcome on here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. I'm your host, Daryl Martin, and uh, checking out where the market's at right now. We got the S&P up an entire three points, and NASDAQ is up uh, three points as well. We got the Russell down 30 cents, and the Dow's up 34. Looking on over at gold, it's down $12 on the day right now, with silver down over 1%. Copper falling suit. It's also down over one percent on the day. We got oil up twenty-one cents. We got corn down forty bucks. Wow! So corn down a lot. Soybeans down forty-five. Uh, just some massive moves right there. I, I got to pull up the charts here in a second. Just look at that in detail. Euro dollar up thirty-five pips. Pound dollar up forty-three pips. Aussie dollar down thirty-six. Euro yen down twenty pips. Pound yen down a whole five pips. U.S. yen down 44 pips. U.S. Canadian up four. U.S. franc down 47. And, uh, yeah, so we're going to have to look at some of the stuff that's going on. Right now, uh, we got, let's look at what's happening in the uh, world of the fundamentals on trading. And i uh, remind you of a few things, go through a few things. I uh, didn't really have much in the way of trades last night. This morning, we had a couple things. U.S. CAD came out, but it was not really just the best mover this morning. And uh, it's one of those things that it's sort of difficult. You go in, you want to trade, right? I mean, we all like to trade. We hate to not trade. I mean, when you love to trade, is, I think trading is one of the few businesses in the world that you do that uh, you're sort of bummed whenever the uh, market is closed. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I can't trade. There's a holiday. So, um, however, what you need to remember even more as a trader is when it is a holiday is one of the best times not to trade. So I did a couple of trades today. They worked out pretty well. Did a couple that didn't work out. And um, but overall, you know, just not a lot happening. Let me drill on down. We'll go into uh, charts on here. We'll look at some details on some of the news trades that came out this morning. And I'll pull it up and it auto load for you here in just a second. But uh, what you want to know is, I mean, just definitely keep. Um, there we go. Whenever, whenever you have like basically two days before, two days after a holiday. Then you know you definitely need to expect lighter volume, you know, less liquidity, things going on. And so I mean, you had this little move like down to half deviation, pulled back up, went back down to half deviation, pulled back up, nothing major, um, and probably didn't move far enough. So you have a lot of times you have more implied volatility because knowing that there's less liquidity, they sort of build in more implied volatility into the market because it can move faster because there's less orders. And so that's part of what can make it difficult to trade as well, is the market can move really fast on very little, um, just due to, you know, certain areas starting to close down. Like Australia is closed, you know, today, right? Because it's there Friday, New Zealand's closed. So they're closed all day. And, um, you know, so the USD CAD, I mean, it came out, the news basically on the Canadian dollar was positive. The news on the dollar was negative. And uh, the GDP went up. They thought it'd be 0.1. It was 0.2%. Uh, which was a growth over the expectation, is also um, you know better than last uh, report in March, on March 1st. And then if we go in and um, look at, they had a couple other reports. They had their RMPI came out better than expected. Their IPPA came out, I mean, literally across the board, all three, the high, medium, and low, all came in better. Unemployment claims came in worse than expected, came in at 357,000. That's the worst number we've had since February of this year. Um, so it was really negative news for the uh, dollar itself. And then you got the final GDP. Uh, the, the weird thing about news right now on the dollar or on unemployment claims is bad news on unemployment can actually mean good news for the market. And, and I know that sounds so weird, but uh, because Bernanke's tied unemployment to quantitative easing, bad news means more likely to have more quantitative easing. And because uh, that unemployment number drops a lot, well, that means we may not have it for as long, and the market's sort of addicted right now to QE, to all this bond buying that happens every day. And uh, this is one of the biggest bond buying days of the month. I think it's actually the second largest bond buying day of the month. And um, so, you know, that basically can basically make a bad day not as bad, or it can make a good day really good. And uh, if we go over, and I'll show you this right here. 
we go to the New York Fed's website, we go to markets, go to open market operations. And then uh, temporary, you know, there probably isn't anything today. No, nope. permanent, hop on in there and you can go to the schedule. So we're going to have the schedule with the schedule for today, 4.25 to 5.25 billion. So on the 15th, we actually, was the only, I think the only day we had that was higher than this month, but uh, or today. So this is the second highest bond buying day. Again, it makes a bad day less negative, a good day more positive. All right. So let's say the market should be just flying down right now. It's going to, it basically helps stunt that drop in the market. And um, obviously the market is not flying down at the moment, but, uh, you know, it's not exactly flying up either. So, um, and that does help, like I said, stunt the move. And it's, it's one of those fundamental things you want to be aware of. And it uh, doesn't mean, basically, like what I don't do is I usually don't go real heavy short. And I make short, but I don't go heavy short into a market that has a lot of bond buying on it. Um, this is also the last day of the month. We're going into a holiday weekend. Well, some people have got hosed pretty lately over holiday weekends, so they could be a little bit nervous, right? Uh, one of those people being Cyprus. They opened the banks again today, um, or you know, reopened the banks, whatever. They've been closed since uh, the crisis unfolded uh, basically two weeks ago, and um, pretty interesting. You know, they went. I mean, just reading through everything that's going on. I mean, not. I mean, sad more than interesting. I mean, it's just pure robbery. But uh, two of the banks are being completely restructured, and. Uh, they're trying to, you know, put it all together and trying to not have everybody, you know, go ballistic. One of the banks, um, if you had anything over $100,000, you lost it. It's gone. And um, I want to say it was like Promise Bank or something like that, which, I mean, it's the the irony, the bank's name itself. And those are the people that got the most hosed. Um, and then if you go in and you look at, let's see, what is it? Bank of Cyprus, if you have anything over $100,000, you lost 40% of it. If you're in the other banks, you're just fine. And then a big report came out. Why did the Russians all of a sudden back all this stuff? Well, apparently they pulled a lot of money out um, right before there was a loophole where they could pull some money out and um, because they had a ton of the money that was in the market and they went in and pulled that money out before the uh, lockdown happened. And um, so it wasn't that big of a deal to them. And they moved their money into banks that, of course, wasn't, weren't going to get hosed. It's not that if you had money anywhere it got hosed. If you have money in Bank of Cyprus, that's where you lost 40%, okay? If you had your money in, whatever, Promise Bank, or whatever it was, I'll figure out what the exact bank was before the show is over and let you know. But uh, you lost everything over 100 grand. I mean, just absolutely robbery, and uh, they can just take the money from the banks. It's like, well, where did the loans go? Nobody answers that question, you know? And nothing that they're doing, by the way, nothing that they're doing addresses any issue. So it's not about a solution. It's about how do we get the next loan? Well, let's take all this money from the people, and we'll get another loan. That's what the whole thing is about. And, uh, but they're not, they're not, I haven't seen any proposals on what they're going to do to actually fix things going forward. And why did these issues come up? And I mean, yeah, they had the Greek, they had a lot of Greek bank debt and they were overloaded on that. But uh, it's not like they didn't know that months ago, even a year ago. So um, it's just they waited for a long time to figure it out and do something about it until they had to do something about it. And, uh, and they're also uh, capping withdrawal limits at $300 a day. So, I mean, I can't even imagine that. So, I mean, most days it's easy to spend more than $300. I mean, just between your bills, gas, food. So, um, I don't even know how you pay your bills on that. I mean, you have to go in and, like, stagger them out. How does that work? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of questions. They're going to put armed guards at all the banks because they know people are going to be irate. They're going to get their money out. They can only withdraw $300 a day right now. They can only pull out a few thousand dollars out of the country at one time. So, crazy stuff. That's why you uh, have some money, you know. Even if you had the money, I'm not saying that the safety deposit box is going to be a good place because the bank's closed, you still can't get it out. But if you're only getting a quarter percent, why is it there anyway, you know? So, uh, you know, if we just did the safety deposit box, you could go in there and pull ten grand and walk out the door. But if it's in your bank account, sorry. Um, anyway, so that's, you know, that's what's going on right now. And uh, so they're work, waking, you know, waking up to that, realizing that right now. Um so let's move on to what's going on in the market. Uh, so we got the CAD dot. We got the uh, dollar unemployment claims coming in negative, and that's somewhat positive. Um, we got a lot of bond buying happening. Natural gas storage didn't have a massive impact again day before a holiday. So going to be a little bit interesting. Um, even two days up to a holiday can be pretty interesting. And then uh, there's a lot of yen reports coming out tonight. I wouldn't touch them, but they're coming out tonight. And then going on in tomorrow, um, a lot of the markets are closed. Uh, bank holidays, Switzerland, Europe. Um, Canada, you're going to have, uh, Nadex is going to be shut down. So a lot of markets closed tomorrow, and there's really just no good reason to trade tomorrow, in my opinion, at all. Um, if maybe you have some way to do it, but looking on into the weekend, um, daylight savings time is shifting. 
in uh, Europe, Britain, and uh, Switzerland. So now your 5.30 reports are going to be happening at 4.30. Your 8.30 reports are going to be happening at 7.30, things like that. So they're going to be bumping up an hour. They finally uh, caught up to the daylight savings time because we started doing it earlier for some reason. And um, and then, let's see here, New Zealand and Australia are going to be closed on Sunday. Okay? So make sure you got that one on your calendar. There will be some China reports coming out Sunday night. Um, wouldn't really trade off of it, but they are coming out. And then Monday, uh, you're going to have Switzerland, Europe, um, Britain, all those are going to be closed down. However, Monday night, okay, Monday night when everything is opened back up, Australian dollar is, uh, or the markets are about to open back up, they're going to have their federal funds rate, their cash rate, their rate statement. It's going to be coming out Monday night at 1130. So that's actually a trade I am going to be trading. I'll be looking at that one right there. Again, 1130 Monday night. And then uh, go into Tuesday, we're going to have the manufacturing PMI and the services PMI at 4.30. Usually they're at 5.30 now. They're at 4.30 uh, with daylight savings time, and I'm talking Eastern time. And uh, so you got a British pound trade. You're actually going to have six different pound announcements come out at once. So you could look at straddling those on the spreads. Uh, you could strangle the daily binaries or, again, straddle them on the spreads themselves. And uh, that's really all that's coming out uh, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, we do have trade balance uh, Tuesday night, so it's one report. It can actually be a decent mover. And uh, so that could be another one to look at. We'll analyze that more on Tuesday. We'll go into detail. But it's not its not really known for being the biggest moving announcement. So, you know, uh, if you're going to trade it, trade it light. Don't go in with, like, you know, 100 contracts, maybe one or two or three just to get some experience. But it's really not the biggest moving announcement. Uh, but every once in a while, those small announcements just explode, you know, so you never know. But uh, historically, not a big uh, quake um, in the financial markets from the trade balance report. And we can roll in. Let's look at it real quick. What do we got on Wednesday? Wednesday, we're going to have pound construction PMI, 430. We're going to have ADP non-farm payroll. So we're going to have some uh, big reports right there. That's a gold trade. That's a potential dollar-yen trade. we got ISM non-manufacturing PMI coming out at 10. And uh, China will actually be closed on Wednesday. They have a bank holiday. And uh, let's see. What is that going to be for? Uh, it's called Tomb Sweeping Day. So uh, I guess it's sort of like our Memorial Day, going and, you know, cleaning up the... Grace, putting flowers out, things like that. Just my guess. Uh, but I'm sure it is something that is very treasured over there. And we go and look at 8.30, uh, building approvals, retail sales. And uh, so that's at 8.30. And uh, that will happen in Aussie at dollar, 8.30 p.m. on Wednesday night. So uh, check that one out. So 8.30 again, Wednesday night. And um, that will be probably a pretty good trade to check out as well. Just sort of weighing out the week coming up for you. We got Thursday, let's see here, we're going to have some Spanish bonds happening, and uh, so that could be interesting. So have some Spanish and Italian numbers coming out, that could cause some volatility, not necessarily directly tradable. And uh, we also have the British interest rate announcement coming out, along with the European interest rate announcement coming out next week. And we're going to have non-farm payrolls. So a lot of, a lot of good stuff coming out starting next week, uh, middle of the week there. All right, stay tuned, we'll be right back after this break. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Off the trading hour. And so just looking at a few things going on right now, looking across everything and uh, just, you know, checking out more and more details on this as it keeps coming out. But uh, one of the things I'm seeing right now is they're having issues on, they cannot, they're not allowed to cash checks at the moment. They can deposit checks, <laughs> so they'll take your money, but uh, you cannot cash them. And you can't send a check uh, outside the country um, larger than $5,000. So if you have like a child going to a school abroad, you can't write a check for that right now. So there's some really interesting things. People don't even know how to cat, like what do they do with their salary checks. So um, the stock market over there is closed. So until at least uh, next week. So they're uh, gonna they're delaying that even further. It's been closed since March 16th. So um, and people are calling in. They have like a radio shows on daily morning shows and stuff. People are calling in and asking, just trying to figure out how to you know handle it still with the restrictions. Now they said they may lift the restrictions next week, um, and I'm sure they're gonna lift them lightly because they're trying to what they're trying to do is prevent from everybody from pulling all their money out and just you know finalizing the collapse. Um, but I think all they're doing is causing a slow, painful death. But they're trying to make it where it's so slow that people get over it. And they're like, hey, I have to function. I don't have a choice. Money's got to be there. So no doubt, if you have money there, and let's say you didn't get uh, your account robbed, uh, you're definitely pulling it the second you can. And so I'm sure a lot of that money is going to be, the second those restrictions are gone, they're still going to have major issues. That's not going to go away. Uh, and I'm sure any, you know, like Russian investors and stuff that had money over there, they're going to pull all that money out because they can put it in Singapore, they can put it in Dubai. There's a lot better places and in more safe places that they could actually deposit their money, obviously, than Cyprus. But uh, 
pays to know, you know, how much uh, bad debt your bank is holding. So, do you know? Be the next question for you, right? Um, right here. So, the bank I bank at is a state bank. It's not a national bank, and I make sure that uh, like it basically it doesn't take on a lot of loans. So it has it's mainly a bank. It uh, it does some loans, but the loans it's very restrictive on the loans. It didn't do all the mortgage backed, you know, crisis loans and everything else. They'll more have like personal loans based on you know account history and everything else. But it's uh, more just it's it's actually a bank. So money market deposit, checking accounts, you know, free checking, free wires, uh, free safety deposit boxes. So it's a very very cool solid bank. But uh, you know, just make sure you know what's really what is the state of your bank, um, wherever you're banking. All right, well, let's look at a couple other things. We were talking about some markets that were really moving. So some were and uh, some weren't. But, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. I'm sure we'll find out. And uh, that's not just on this chart. Look at this right here. I mean, that's uh, that's a stop limit day, I'm sure. So, uh, wow, look at corn. So I'm going to have to do some more research on that. But uh, I was looking over at Think or Swim right here, and I saw the corn, and I'm like, that's got to be an error. And uh, not an error. So down 40 points, see 45 points. So uh, probably a stop limit day. And uh, one way to check out that and learn about what a stop limit day is, but uh, that's just insane. Let's hop on over to cmegroup.com. We're going to go over here. We're going to go to ags. And uh, we're going to pick this up right here. We got corn. Yeah, down 40 points right there. So, I mean, we're not making it up, right? And uh, let's click on the product itself. Let's go to contract specs. And let's see here. Daily price limit rules. 40 cents per bushel. We'll on the 60 with the market close that limit or bid. There should be no price limits on the current month contract on or after the second business day preceding the first day of the delivery month. Meaning, second business day the first day of delivery month. All right, well, that doesn't apply until, like, April. So yeah, it hit a corn just hit a stop limit day, and again, I'd have to check out some news to find out why. But if you were short and you're in Nadex, you're very happy. <laughs> um, if not, you're not that happy right now. So let's go over. Let's check out uh, soybeans also, and right here. But price just it's like something just a lot of uh, corn and soybeans were just dropped in the market or something, or a great crop report came out or whatever. I'm going to log into Nadex right now. I'm curious to see because they should be closing at the same time that there's a uh, stop limit in the market. So right over here, let me get in there. We'll look at this. And uh, see what happened. All right. Pulling this up. And we'll go into commodities, corn. Yeah, they pulled all quotes. So, uh, but they'll still settle out. So if the market's down at, you know, seven whatever, let's see, what is it at right now? We got it down at uh, 695. So, yeah, if you did a corn contract today, you maxed out on profit. No matter what. And uh, probably the same thing over on the binary. So I bet they didn't even go that far. So I got it right here. Yeah. You maxed profit on anything you did if you were short. There, there. We'll be right back after this break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF. And over the same two trading days, Market Insight subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar, bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, so point about back up, but uh, yeah, the agriculture reports came out. Soybean says not limit moved yet. It actually could move down 70 points. I was looking over on CME's website and uh, not moved all the way down. It has a uh, 70 cents per bushel. And, um, uh, but uh, yeah, just a massive move right there, and uh, expandable to a buck five, then a buck sixty. But uh, just a major report, and uh, what I could see on it is that basically farmers have pointed more than they've ever pointed since the 1930s. Um, corn in the ETF it crashed down as well. I mean, you can see right down there it's down almost six percent right now, and uh, basically they just they blew the report out. So that I've just never seen it drop. I mean, I've seen it move. We've all seen corn move a lot lately, but uh, wow, that was just not even expected. I mean, I expected a move on a, you know, ag day, but not like that. And, uh, makes me a little jealous. Now I wish I would have been in there strangling, straddling that. So I need to start adding that to my news list, right? So <laughs> I know to watch it and sometimes I do catch it, but I don't have it right in front of me on the main news report I use. So I'm going to have to start pulling up my ag reports and uh, make sure I'm ready for those because who knows when that's going to happen next time. But, uh, yeah, huge move and, uh, corn is locked down and, uh, so we'll see where it goes from here, but my goodness. So anytime that happens, it's just you don't see limit days that often. And I just posted a link up there on the Tiger Den where they're uh, talking about the court ETS crashing down and the limit moves happening. And uh, basically it said the, the biggest report in this is the higher expected uh, corn stocks and the smaller than expected soybean acreage number. So basically there was a whole lot more uh, corn stocks, but the uh, acreage was actually still low on soybeans, but despite that, 
Still a very massive drop right there in the soybean market. And it's still ticking a little bit, but nobody's really wanting to quote on that. I know I wouldn't want to be quoting on that right now if I was a market maker. And um, so anytime there's a fast market, you know, don't be surprised when they start pulling bids and offers. It's just like in the flash crash. I mean, there, there basically just was no bids. It just kept dropping, dropping, dropping. And so uh, there's nobody wanted to buy. Somebody was buying. Nobody was actually offering the bid to uh, buy the market back up. They just swept the entire thing out. And um, you can watch out for some things on that. You'll see that on places like Nanex and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. Um, but let's see here. What else do we got going on? That was just uh, that just threw me off. I usually don't see that happening. I just saw that big move earlier in the day. I was like, what is that? Is that a limit day? And sure enough, there we go. All right, let's check out our deviation see where we're going. So we got the fundamentals wrapped up. We got the, uh, you know, the holidays coming right around there. And, uh, but yeah, look at that. It's poof. So it drops right down. Soybeans, you're going to see pretty much the same picture right there. You can see it drop down, didn't limit, and uh, sort of bouncing off that at the moment. And uh, we go on in here, and let's see what we can buy and sell, see where everything's going on. So if you were in, so as this pointless as this endeavor seems, then uh, you would have your stop right here. <laughs> but uh, check it out. I, well, here, that, this is sort of cool. Um, three deviations, Okay. That's a 99.7% of expectation of move. All right, that's as far as we expect a market to move on any given day. And uh, we don't expect it to move that far. But we, only, we are saying there's only a 0.3% chance it's really going to close below that level on any given day. So it's very, very, that's how rare it is that that happens. And, but look at that level. I mean, it went right down to one, two, and then three deviations. And let me see if I can switch this over. I think I have a template I've made that's a little easier to read there for the show. There you go. And um, so you can see right there, I mean, we went right down to that three deviation level and uh, stopped, turned right around. I mean, that is on the money. So as far as, you know, calling it right there of what the low, you know, could possibly be and the expectation. We go back, look at corn. I'm sure we're going to see the same thing over here. And, um, yep, I mean, three, it actually broke three, about three and a half. I mean, it definitely is outside that bell curve. But, I mean, they also set the limit outside the triple deviation. Okay, so that's how rare it is that they set the limit is outside of that level. So, and really, you don't expect things to move to a limit. That's the whole point of the limit is to stop things because they're going way too far. And, uh, anyways, interesting thing to watch and learn and see as uh, things like that happen occasionally. That should scare the crap out of you, by the way. I got, I got to go back over here. I just got to point this out. Okay, if you were in corn and you were long you were having a wretched day okay that's a quarter a point it dropped 30 plus points so uh, at 50 bucks a point that's fifteen hundred dollars on one contract your limit which means you can't do anything um, until the markets reopen so you know you're gonna you know be stressed out for a little bit and this is why I like to trade at Nadex okay if I was long Whatever my risk was, that was my risk. I couldn't have a massive limit move like this, um, you know, hurt me. So my my risk would never be larger than what it uh, originally was. And I mean, that's we go down to seconds. I'm sure we're going to see this thing just move lightning fast, and uh, that probably is literally a split second. So that's one minute where the entire big move happened. You can see right there, you got that. Okay, so you had one minute. All right, so there's one minute. The next minute. And then right after that, I mean, it sort of stopped for a second, and boom, limit day. So they tried to see if anything could happen, and nothing would happen, and it shut down. So two minutes, and um, probably this is like a second or so. Hesitates for a second, and then boom, and fast move. Well, let's say you had a box on right here. You're down, you're out, whatever. But you know what? That's all you're down. You can't. You don't have to worry about slippage like on things like this. And uh, those are days you need to remember <laughs> because they do happen. And, um, you know, myself, I mean, I'm a trader. I follow the news like crazy. I wouldn't even paying attention. I wasn't even thinking about ag reports today for whatever reason. Now, of course, I wasn't trading ag today, so that, you know, part of it. But uh, if you didn't know about the ag report and you were trading the ags, you know, obviously, bad idea. And the second one is, if you did, period, this can, I mean, moves like this can happen, especially on corn and soybeans. Uh, natural gas, things like that, they can move like really fast. And uh, you, just, you don't want to take on that undefined risk. And when you're trading outright futures and forex and even stocks and ETFs, your risk is not defined except for ultimately to zero. So it's just you notice it more usually on futures and forex because you're more leveraged 
um, unless you have like portfolio margining or something of that sort. But you know, you notice it more. So here, you know, you're gonna notice it because you have a massive leverage, and uh, if you trade Nadex, you can have that massive leverage without having that massive risk. And uh, if you don't know how to trade Nadex, hop on over to tfnn.com, okay, and do three things. So one of those is that uh, we're gonna have it up here uh, pretty soon for you. First thing is click on the Nadex banner and sign up for a demo account. Our products demo account. Click on that. Fill in the form. You can have a demo account in a few seconds. Um, live account only cost a hundred. Not even cost. It's a deposit of a hundred dollars to create a live account. You can you can start trading. You can trade corn today for less than a hundred bucks. And if we go on over here to the um, diagnostic box spread analyzer, get access to tutorials on how to trade spreads, how to trade binaries on Nadex access to the scanner, access to the deviation levels that I go through every day. And uh, we're going to be having a uh, another event coming up, and we're going to be posting it on here. And let's see, it looks like we're going to be having it, all the details, but it looks like it's going to come out uh, May on May 11th. So is when we're going to be doing the event, so looking forward to that. And uh, it'll be sort of like our San Mateo event, but, uh, you know, just uh, another one. And so if people over there on the northeast coast or if you want to fly out there and find out about this and you don't want to be waiting then uh, now's the time to do that so we'll put that up we'll have that registration link for you with all the details coming up very soon it's going to be again in boston so out there in boston massachusetts and i uh, look forward to seeing a bunch of you out there but nadex check out the the videos and then uh you know get ready to attend the event in may you got plenty of time so that way you can um, you know book plane tickets hotel whatever you need to do but we'll have all the details up for you here in the next week so that way you can register for the event and so you can know how to avoid those big days like that. And now let's go over, let's go scroll through some markets real quick. Let's check out, you know, a couple of the currencies, a couple of the indices. And uh, we'll wrap through the uh, deviation levels on the markets. And let me pull it on back to 10 minutes because that's what we're always looking at for our 10 minute stop method. And so right here, got the Aussie dollar moved down pretty much one deviation. Look at that again today. So you go in be right there that'd be where your stop would be at you get stopped out on the trade if you got another entry you were short again or if you got short later in the day like maybe this morning you were short well this uh, bar right here closed down below the deviation the one deviation when it did that and then it closed above it did not close back below it so that'd be your stop right there so going over we'll look at the euro dollar and on the euro dollar so had some uh, moves up so let's say you're hopping in this morning you're long the euro dollar you get all these nice pullbacks perfect trades for uh, hopping on in and you hop in and basically after the market opens up so right here you get in buy markets rising you're looking for a close above the deviation you get a close above it right there stopped out on the next bar that's right there at 0.7 deviations and uh, turns around basically you're glad you got out because look at that yeah you got like one more little pop and then it fell right back down and let's say you did. Let's say you stopped out. You took. You had nice profit on that trade. Let's say you decide to hop back in again, and go long on the trade. Well, you had another place to tighten your stop right there. Came back down. You're out. So I mean, not a bad trade at all. Let's turn around. Finally, when it knocks out, it closes below this deviation level. And if you were deciding to flip around and go short, then you'd be tightening your stop right there, waiting for a move possibly back to settlement. Uh, looking on over, checking out the uh, pound dollar. See where that one's sitting at right now. And, uh, you know, same, basically the, almost the exact same chart, except for it moved a perfect deviation day. You can see how it basically stopped right on a one deviation level for the day. And so we stop on that one. It pulls back, closes below, it closes above it again. So we can tighten a little bit further. Doesn't get past one deviation. Now, remember, one of the rules I always tell people is when it gets to one deviation, okay, that is a point where you can take off at least part, if not all, your position. You don't expect it. Only 30% of the time do you expect it to move further than a deviation. So you don't have to wait on the close above one deviation. So, or, I mean, you could even decide, I'm going to tighten it at the bar that touched the deviation if you wanted to. And I'm talking about a, a plus one or a minus one deviation level. And that'll help you a lot on locking in your profits. Again, you could take off at one or maybe take off half. And if it does run, then great. You can grab that two, three, four deviation day. But most of the time... It's not going to. So uh, let's go ahead and we'll look at a couple more currency pairs real quick. We'll check out the U.S. Canadian. And uh, we can see, I mean, this was just tough. So <laughs> I don't know if anybody made money trading U.S. Cad today unless you were scalping. If you're going in and scalping for like four to five ticks, you might have made some money, but it didn't do a whole lot of anything. It went down, 
went back up, went back down, went back but I mean a whole lot of nothing. So I have a whole lot of nothing to say on US CAD for today. Uh, I did have one trade I took, and it actually I actually took two trades on USD CAD. So I had one trade I took, it did well, and uh, it covered the loss on the other trade. So I straddled the news, that one didn't work, and then I went and I did another trade later um, on a binary that actually covered the loss and made a little bit of money. And that basically is when it was you know moving back down. And so I was able to take that on, it expired out, took the profit, and uh, basically called it a day on the USD CAD. Looking on over, let's see, USD Yen. And uh, it's right here on the dollar yen. You can see as it uh, pulled on down, and then you got your stop below. It's still pretty high, but uh, that's where the stop would have been, following the rules, trying to give it room to move. It does pull back up, and then pulls back down, and really just, you know, sort of chop. I mean, you know, you're getting some decent movement, but, um, I mean, not huge movement, but, you know, 30, 40 pips up and down on that. A little bit difficult to trade the USD yen today with that kind of movement going on. And, um, but uh, I mean, you had some movement off the news, so a couple of news reports came out, and uh, but just nothing to really write home about there on that market. Looking on over at oil, checking out where oil's at right now. Oil's climbing on up, and uh, let's see if it'll uh, basically this deviation, this half deviation will hold. If it does, then it'll uh, pull back down. And um, I'm looking at being short right around 97, so I'm hoping it pulls back myself, but uh. That's where we got the oil trade at right there, and it had to close above here to actually lock in a stop. So right at this point, we haven't locked in a stop on the long side, and uh, personally, I hope we don't. But uh, you may be you may be cheering for the other team, so you know it's one of those things. Depending upon if you're going long or short, that's why I don't know. I think uh, you don't really bring your prayers into the trading room because there's somebody praying on the other side too. Uh, just like at a sporting event, you're both praying to win. So I just pray that neither team gets hurt that bad. Um, <laughs> ES uh, 613 uh, right here. Check out the S&P right now. And we're basically down a half and up a half deviation. That gives us a full deviation on the day. And looking over at a couple of the other markets. And we got, uh, let's see, we can check out the DAX, see what's going on over on the DAX. And uh, getting some decent moves. Basically dropped down, stayed down, and just been choppy all day. And let's see, we'll crawl on down to the gold market. And uh, gold right there, it's moved down a full deviation. Looks like it might want to move a little further, but uh, gold is shut down for the day. It closes at 1.30. And um, now the globex keeps going, of course, but it basically closed down just below one deviation. So it did a good job uh, minding its deviations there. And we did not get a close below, let's see, to right here. Got a close below the point seven. Then finally it closed right here below the one. And then when it popped back up on this one, you would have got stopped out. We would have you could have captured a good, you know, nice move on that move right there. Now this one, you probably would have had. Let's say if you were short already this morning, then you would have had a. Uh, and this was right on the news too, so it's not a big surprise that that happened. But um, right there, so you probably got stopped out on the spike right there on the news, if you were still in. But then you had another great uh, chance to go short on the market. And looking on over a little bit further down, check out copper. How'd copper do today? And uh, it moved one deviation as well, so it is a, it is a lot smoother than gold. Gold can be a little crazy sometimes, but uh, you can get some nice moves on copper. So you got to move right there, cut your stop right there, and uh, we'll check out a few more markets when we come back. We'll wrap up the rest of the indices. There, they'll be right back after this break. always taken the long view when it comes to investing but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose what if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk at direction funds we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns smart investors deserve smart alternatives find yours at directionfunds.com an investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC.
David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report, which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks, as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the Gold Report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. All right, folks, welcome on here to the Diagnostic Trading Hour. Looking at a couple of last markets and wrapping them on up. And so right here, what we got is uh, we got copper going on, and we're going down checking out, uh, going down the list. We got natural gas, so uh, natty gas, we talked about that earlier, moved down. We finally did move, finally, um, after it took its time off the report. And I mean, literally, it just up, down, up, down, did a whole lot of nothing. And uh, so if you would have chose the end-of-day expiration, it would have worked out great for you. If you chose an earlier expiration, trade did not work out so well. So uh, if you're trading the uh, news on that one. Just because, I mean, it shot down, shot up, and did basically nothing um, till uh, 1 o'clock. So when it finally decided to move, and it does trade till 2.30. But, uh, you know, pretty far wide report right there trying to put that one together. So that may be a lesson. You know, go back, look at the natural gas reports. Anytime you're trading news, see how far does it usually move to know if it's justifiable uh, to consider looking at, you know, maybe I need to, uh, you know, give a trade more time. That's my might go out and pick a longer time frame. Um, looking over here, let's check out a couple of the other reports. Uh, we can go in and look at the uh, Nick see how that's doing right now. And so a uh, pretty flat market over there. And we'll check out the NASDAQ. So NASDAQ uh, sort of edged a little higher, hasn't done a whole lot, hasn't even been a half deviation in either direction. And uh, pretty quiet today overall. And uh, we'll see, just sort of scrolling through different markets. Yeah, that's not going to give me enough data right there to load it up. 
Let's see here, the SGX on the Nikkei, same issue, not getting any data. All right, let's go ahead and look at uh, silver. So on silver right there, we got a solid, perfect deviation. Metals are really just cooperating very well today. But right there, uh, just closed down below one at deviation. So either you got out at one or you got stopped out when it pulled right back. But a perfect deviation move over there for you on silver. And uh, looking at the uh, Russell 2000, the small caps. And so you can see right here. And uh, got some trades where I was playing around in there, showing some stuff this morning. But uh, you can close it out. You can look at it. But it basically, just a whole lot of nothing going on. And let's see. Go over to the Dow. And on the Dow right there, we can see the market moved up basically almost down a half deviation. Did move up a full half deviation a little bit more. From low to high, we got a full deviation move across the board. But uh, we definitely give the half deviation move there on the Dow. And um, then it's turned around and sort of falling back down at the moment. So right here, where it finally decided to close above. And then it fell on back. So that's a good sign for a pullback there on the Dow when it does break below that deviation stop. And uh, we can go and check out, let's see, well, we already covered the ags, so we got those covered down. And um, you can go and look at some of the other markets, the bonds and everything else. That basically wraps up the markets for the week. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at where everything's sitting right now. we got the S&P up three points with the NASDAQ up 3.75. Russell's up 0 0.90 and the Dow is up 35. Gold is down 12 points on the day. Silver down 1% along with uh, copper being down 1% as well. All the gold markets basically down one deviation at the moment. We got oil up 64 cents. We got corn down limit 40 points. Soybeans working on that limit move, still moving down further, down 51.75 at the moment. Euro dollar is up 33 pips. Pound dollar is up 47. Aussie dollar is down 32. Euro yen down 14 pips. Pound yen basically flat on the day, just down 5. US yen also uh, very little movement, but it is down a solid 40 at this moment. U.S. Canadian up only four little bitty pips on the day. U.S. Frank down 44. And, uh, you know, overall markets are pretty quiet. We got gold is, uh, let's see, right there down 12.3. So just looking at every market across the board, not a whole lot going on except for in the ags. They're moving like crazy. And uh, just be ready. We got holidays coming up. Enjoy it. Take your time off. Refresh. Get relaxed. Get ready to go next week. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.